Uh, my name's Laura Hill. I head up the UK region for Cloud Essentials. And yeah, this is a, a second in a series of webinars really designed to help you tap into powerful capabilities from Microsoft around compliance, around reducing risk and generally improving the way that you manage life cycle of, of all of your content as it flows through Microsoft 365. And our passion at Cloud Essentials in all of this is, is sort of facilitating that continuous journey of adoption through Microsoft 365 and getting our clients to a point that they've got a very sustainable approach to compliance, which of course means a lot more than just kind of switching on the technology. So our aim in these uh, these webinars is to impart some practical lessons learned and uh, yet today's topic is on insider risk. So we'll get stuck in. Um, so what is insider risk? This uh, Gartner definition is as good as any um, for the context that we're in, which is the tools, the capabilities to measure, to detect and contain undesirable behavior of trusted accounts within the organization. So, you know, we're talking here uh, about consciously sort of looking inward, looking at leaks of data, looking at breaches of confidentiality, um, IP theft, fraud, insider trading, uh, breaches of, of regulations, breaches of policy, um, very sort of intentional, malicious, all round dodgy behavior. Um, but also maybe inadvertent, you know, genuine mistakes, ignorance, a a lack of consciousness, perhaps um, amongst employees and, and third parties that interact with your organization um, that, yeah, leave, leave you exposed, um, especially with all of this sort of ease of collaboration and remote working that, of course, Microsoft 365 facilitates. So the, the focus is on the use of Microsoft Purview capability to really tackle insider risk. And you know, we know that Microsoft 365 is not your sole information world. Um, but it's likely that you're here because you're really on a growth curve with Microsoft 365. You know, activity levels have ramped up, are ramping up, collaboration uh, is ramping up, the, the sheer amount of content that you are churning in Microsoft 365 is really growing. Um, and you've likely already sort of invested heavily in those foundations around your security and compliance settings in 365. And yeah, Microsoft is, um, uh, the pace of development around the, the purview stack is is very fast and uh, the solutions are very feature rich. So it really is a great place to to start and sort of trailblaze your approach to, to tackling insider risk um, if you've not um, been focused on it previously and uh, sort of engage in the technology, but also start to build people and process around it um, as you sort of scale out how you're using Microsoft 365. So. And um, that's sort of the theme and why we're here today. Uh, the format for this session together is really some sort of familiarization around the capability available to you in Microsoft 365 and to bring some tips for implementation of a, a program of work around it. So we're going to be muted for the delivery of the presentation content for the first sort of 30 minutes or so. Uh, my colleague Johan, who is our head of cloud, is going to give us a tour around the feature set. And Idayat is here from Microsoft. Microsoft as a compliance black belt to also talk about um, sort of best practices around successful implementation. Uh, so we'll work through the presentation content and then we're going to stop recording, come off mute and just facilitate a bit more of an open forum. So please bring your feedback, bring challenges that you've got to the table, um, ask any questions, feel free to type any questions as we go into the chat um, box and we'll pick those up. Um, you know, we've got uh, various different industries represented in the audience today, a mix of professional roles as well, which is great to see. So please do sort of use that time to engage with us and, and, and others um, in conversation around this, this topic. So for those who don't know us already, um, just a quick context, I suppose, for where we are approaching this conversation from. 
Cloud Essentials are a Microsoft partner around the area of content management. So we help organizations mature their approach to reducing the risk profile of content in 365, um, migrating content in to the platform and managing that content cost effectively and in line with um, best practices around lifecycle management and also ultimately sort of opening up the value in that content so that you can you can really surface it uh, for your business advantage. So in this series of webinars, we are gradually working our way through the Purview offering. Uh, if you list, uh, missed last month's uh, session on information protection, um, we can put the link for you uh, in the chat. And coming up uh, next month is a session on Compliance Manager. Um, Chris Hathaway is going to show us sort of how to use the Compliance Manager tool set to take stock on your progress um, and your maturity levels of, of kind of your compliance controls and uh, actually use it as an interface to kind of forge a, a better working relationship between IT and, and risk and compliance roles to sort of make some tangible progress. Um, and the session after that is going to look at e-discovery where our colleague Adam Bowne um, is going to help us sort of navigate the the search and e-discovery stack um, in 365, so from the sort of base level search through to more advanced e-discovery, and then because of his uh, specialism around uh, forensics, sort of really understand the point at which the Microsoft tools can get you to before perhaps you pass downstream into external legal counsel or deeper forensic tools, um, etc. So yeah, hopefully you can tap into those sessions as well. So uh, around insider risk, you know, in our experience around deployment of some of these features, um, things can sometimes be hard to get off the ground uh, or they they can lose momentum. And so on on reflection and kind of preparation for this session today, um, we we were looking at sort of where the missing pieces were maybe in uh, in where initiatives around insider risk lose momentum. So we just wanted to kind of call those out um, from the off. And the first can be a missing piece in your reasons why. So you're obviously looking to tackle insider risk because you know there are threats, not just from the outside world in, you know, you're acknowledging the insider risk where there are vulnerabilities in how accessible your data is and the fact that employees or third parties that have got access, you know, they've got the inside track, they know how to circumnavigate policies, they know how to move data around. Um, and also you've now got all this sort of access to very clever machine learning um, to detect um, insider activity. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are sorted on your kind of roadmap to a uh, insider risk program. And we see things drift where there is a lack of absolute precision around what you're tactically trying to achieve. And that can also make it harder to justify an appropriate level of budget allocation to this because deploying insider risk features, it does require investment in, in licenses, in time, in sheer effort um, and so when your objectives are not crystal clear you know we are trying to prevent x because the implications of x are y you know without that real cornerstone um, we have seen things maybe just don't quite get off the ground or maybe an organization sort of misses some quick wins because um, there can be a lot of distraction about the potential in the technology the next area of weakness that we sometimes see in programs around insider risk concerns the who. Um, you know, this is this is not an IT gig. And in fact, the common thread, I think, through this whole series of webinars that we're running is that we want you to learn from the mistakes of others who have attempted to tackle their compliance journey in Microsoft 365 by IT teams really striving to make headway with the technology without sort of formally um, creating this committee around the technology that consists of HR, um, of risk, legal, compliance, governance, these sort of decision makers um, that will steer things. And things really, really ground to a halt um, whether there isn't that in play. The third area concerns the when, um, which can also trip things up. So, 
yeah, our, our whole offering around compliance in Microsoft is about facilitating these um, stepping stones against a, a very clear roadmap, you know, this sort of logical sequence of progression for adoption. And when organizations are uh, actually very early days in their data privacy policies or approach to labeling, for example, um, yeah, tackling insider risk can make much less of an impact if there isn't that kind of foundation there. Um, and also when our clients have maybe not yet opened up Compliance Centre to their um, risk governance uh, HR roles or perhaps got e-discovery teams active and confident in using Compliance Centre, a familiarisation with that interface, that is also an indicator for us that this journey with insider risk might just have to take a bit of a step back um, before it can accelerate forward. And then finally, the how, which is the reason we wanted to run this session. Um, you know, the journey does need to start with that familiarization of the technology. Um, so you can enjoy that introduction from your hand shortly. Um, but also just to mention, we do see a difference where there is little or no provision around training to use the technology. So yes, the, there's a wealth of learning resources available, the templates are available, um, but because the things that um, the features will sort of pick up on in your environment are going to be really unique to you, you know, your activities, um, your settings, your content, your policies, uh, your workflows, um, there's a very unique learning curve to be factored in until you sort of get things um, settled with your approach to insider risk. And then it's a case of, you know, maturing it all over time. Um, so sometimes we can see a bit of a mis misalignment there on expectations on that learning curve, um, which is definitely another kind of kind of hazard that we see um, with these initiatives. But when it's running, it's really powerful. So the, the rest of the webinar is going to focus on um, how to make your approach um, a success. So I'm just going to hand over to Johan for the next section. Thanks, Laura. So in my se section of today's session, I'm going to give you an overview of the purview inside the risk management solutions broken down into three areas. Firstly, we defined it, then what it does and when to use it and then just an overview of what it actually looks like within the Purview Advent Center. So obviously, both the solutions inside a risk management and communication compliance are part of the Microsoft Purview family of solutions and managed from the Microsoft Purview Admin Center. Um, both solutions inside a risk management and communication compliance um, requires any of the licenses that's currently on screen. Um, it is advanced security and compliance features within the Microsoft solutions. So these are, it requires more than the entry level um, licenses, um, but they are add on uh, available. So you don't have to have the full E5 suite. You can have a combination of either the Microsoft E3 and then the, uh, the relevant <coughs> add on or the Office E3 package and also then the add on. So there's flexibility when it comes to licensing to utilize and both of the solutions within your organization. The next session, uh, section is what it does and when to actually use it. So starting with insider risk management, um, it is designed to manage and minimize, minimize risk in your organization. And it starts with understanding the types of risks found in the modern workplace. Users in the modern workplace have access to create, manage, and share data across a broad spectrum of platforms and services. In most cases, as Rosa mentioned, organizations have limited resources and tools to identify and mitigate organization-wide risks while also meeting user privacy standards. Insider risk management uses the full breadth of services and third-party indicators to help you quickly identify, act, um, and investigate risky activity. By utilizing logs from Microsoft 365 and the Microsoft Graph, Insider Risk Management allows you to define specific policies to identify risk indicators. These policies allow you to identify risk activities and to act to mitigate these risks. Insider Risk Management is built around the following principles. Firstly, transparency. It's a balance of user privacy versus organization risk. 
where the design and the architecture around inside of the disk is built on privacy by design. Configurable and customizable. All the policies comes in a template format, but it's fully customizable to align with industry, geographical, or business group requirements. Integration. Insider risk management is fully integrated across various workflows within the Microsoft Purview solutions, thus having integration into e-discovery um, and case management, as you'll see further on in today's session. And lastly, actionable. Um, it provides you insights and enable your reviewer to review alerts, notifications, and to investigate uh, the cases of insider risk within your organization. The insider risk management workflow consists of the following areas, starting off with policies. Policies are created using predefined templates and policy conditions that define what triggered events and risk indicators are examined in your organization. These conditions include how risk indicators are used for alerts, what users are included in the policy, which services are prioritized, and the monitoring time period. Then there's also alerts. Alerts are automatically generated by risk indicators based on the policies you created. These are all placed on a single dashboard to enable you to quickly view the alerts um, and to access all the relevant info for your investigation. Then under the case management that's built into the solution, there's three different areas, starting with triage. User, new user activities that needs investigation automatically generate alerts that are assigned and needs to review status. Reviewers can quickly identify and review, evaluate, evaluate and triage these alerts. Alerts are resolved by opening a new case, assigning the alert to the existing case, or demisting the alert. You can also filter on alerts based on their severity and level of risk within your organization. Secondly, there's the investigation part. It allows you to quickly investigate all activities for a selected user or user activity. After examining these activities for a user, investigators can dismiss these activities as benign or escalate and share the case with additional collaborators and investigators within your organization. Then lastly, action. If the cases are investigated, reviewers can quickly act and resolve um, the case or collaborate and escalate um, the risk and case to additional risk stakeholders within your organization. This also includes opening up a premium e-discovery case so that your broader compliance and legal team through the Microsoft Purview e-discovery premium solution can get involved with these insider risk case and complete the investigation from a legal team perspective. As you can see, the, the example on screen um, is there's two policies defined with in, insider risk. And if a user, user A, downloads or share content externally, it will send alerts to the dashboard where the incident management and investigators can then um, monitor these alerts um, and then escalate um, and utilize the customize workflows to remediate any of these risks as part of your investigation and resolution methodology. The second part is communication compliance. And it's the second insider risk solution from Microsoft that helps minimize communication risks by helping you detect, capture, and act on inappropriate messages in your organization. Com communication compliance also has predefined and custom policies that allows you to scan internal and external communications for policies that matches um, your organization security and compliance requirements. Reviewers can investigate scanned email, Microsoft Teams, or even third-party communication messages in your organization and take appropriate actions to make sure they're compliant with the organization's messaging standards. 
Communication compliance in Microsoft 365 have you overcome many modern challenges associated with compliance and internal and external communications. These include scanning for increasing types of communication channels, the increased volume of message data, and also enforcing regulatory and risk um, to avoid fines. Communication compliance also supports the separation of um, configuration policies and completing the investigation and lastly in reviewing the messages, ensuring that privacy and again the, the privacy by the design architecture is um, also embedded into this purview solution from Microsoft. Communication compliance uses the following workflow. It starts with configuration phase where in the step you identify your compliance requirements and configure the applicable policies. Policy templates, as mentioned, is a great way for you to start to quickly configure a new compliance policy, but to also quickly modify or update policies as your requirements change. The next step in the workflow is to the investigate part. Here you take a deeper look into the issues detected as matching your communication compliance policies. In the investigate part, um, the, it's also broken down into three um, separate steps, where it includes alerts, where again, same as insider risk, it, 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 I mean, it's got an automated dashboard showing you the alerts of the various policies. Also issue management, for each alert, there's an issue or a case on the communication side. There's also a document review allowing investigators to review the messages on the communication platform as part of the investigation um, requirements. And then lastly, reviewing the user history. So communication compliance takes into account a, a date range um, and user activity rather than um, a case by case um, incident within the communication platform within your organization. And then lastly, it is the remediation part in the co communication compliance where you investigators can use the following um, to close out the risk of each of these alerts. They can uh, make mark the risk or case as resolved. They can also tag a message as not compliant and or compliant with the communication compliance, um, your communication compliance policy within your organization. You can also use the remediation actions to notify the end user that they've breached the communication compliance of your company as part of your user training um, and adoption methodology. And again, the same as insider risk, you can escalate um, the cases um, within communication compliance to the e-discovery team within Microsoft Purview e-discovery premium so that it forms part of the end-to-end -end risk um, investigation and workflow within your organization. The, the flow on screen, you can see the same as the insider risk. Um, there are two policies defined and communication compliance randomly um, captures um, communication logs from the audit log within the Microsoft 365 tenant. And then authorized reviewers has got access to then um, review these alerts um, through the communication compliance dashboard. And then based on the investigation and risk flag and um, utilize custom workflows to remediate or escalate any of these policy breaches. Lastly, for today's session is just what it looks like. So a quick run through of what it actually looks like. So starting off on your insider risk dashboard, when you haven't configured or first time you access it, you get a list of top recommended actions that all organizations need to go through. And depending on where you are with your maturity around other compliance um, and uh, Microsoft purview solutions, you might have already completed one or two of the pre-configuration steps within Insider Risk Management. Once you've completed the initial um, configuration steps, um, you'll get a um, Insider Risk Analytics dashboard that gives you 
um, a list of potential data leaks within your organization based on analytics and machine learning that Microsoft used in the back end to look for possible exfiltration, exfiltration activities within your organization. It also provides you additional information of these potential exfiltration activities within your organization. And it also recommends policies that you can then use to deploy within your insider risk solution. Once you have actually configured insider risk management, you'll have a similar insider risk management dashboard that after you, um, you've configured the policies and cases, you get a list of active alerted cases um, an overview within your organization. You also get a list of active cases and also users associated with um, insider risk within your organization. And there you can see where the data is um, anonymized for privacy within your organization. And then lastly, a list of most active policies within insider risk management. Um, on the alert dashboard, you get a um, you'll see uh, um, alerts needing review within the, your organization and also their severity level and also an indication of alerts over time. So not only a, a, a specific a period, I'm um, sorry, a specific day, but really a, a historic view of your organization and the risk for insider exploitation. And then lastly, a dashboard of alerts and details um, such as the status uh, and with the severity also provided at the bottom. Um, on the cases view, um, you get a list of active and closed cases. And at the bottom, um, you also get a list of um, closed cases. And then also, if you click on, on any of the particular cases, you'll be able to open up the case for more detail. And there you'll see useful insights, including the user's activity over a specific period, um, as shown on the timeline. And these enable the organization to take the appropriate action over a period of time rather than only a specific event around data exploitation um, and, and protection. You'll also get a detail um, of the activities and which triggers these alerts. So you'll, you'll see the user on the example downloaded content, a lot of files to the USB device uh, and thus trigger the alert. Then also within the case, you have access to Content Explorer. If you have the appropriate permissions within um, Purview Insider Risk Management to actually see the content related to the case, um, whether they are actually confidential or not. And all this information allows you then to um, complete the investigation as part of your Insider Risk Management solution. Um, here I'll hand over to a diet that will discuss the top eight tips for your success using Insider Risk Management Program. Thank you. Thanks, Johan, um, for giving that elaborate um, on how we can actually implement information risk um, management itself. So ideally, um, the very first thing I usually like to say is that Governance is quite important. Technology can work on its own. We need people, which are one of the greatest assets an, an organization can have. We need the right people, the right processes within the organization itself. And then the very first question you should ask yourself is, when, when it comes to managing insider risk management, what level are you? What position are you right now? Are you being proactive or are you being reactive? But then in establishing a, a, a robust internal threat program, you need to first identify the potential insider risk within your organization. And how are you able to identify the potential insider risk in your organization? You need to be able to know because your insider risk actually varies across. It could be your employees within your organization. It could be the contractors you have within your organization. It could even be the vendors or your through your supply chain um, supply chain channel that already have access to your organization. And what insider um, the insiders are actually of major attacks or major um, risk to the organization is because they already know what your environment looks like. They already know your security landscape. They can they they already know the loopholes within your organization. They know how to actually circumvent um, how to actually maneuver within your security itself. So, and most organizations tend to forget about they they already always targeted at actually looking out rather than actually looking in. They they implement they invest in a lot of technology looking at okay DLP and the likes. 
preventing um, critical data from being sent out while actually ignoring the risk they have within your organization. So the very first thing you need to do is actually what are the critical assets you have within your organization? What are your crown jewels? And after identifying this critical asset that can um, land your organization into trouble, like penalties, fines, data breaches, then you now start to look at, okay, what are the potential insider risks within your, within your organization? So because if you don't start from the foundational level of identifying what these risks are, then you don't know how to move the next step. You don't know how to move up the next ladder to actually determining how you can prevent this insider risk or how you can detect it or how you can contain it. And I know Johan has talked about the technology itself, which is really all about how we can actually manage the insider risk. But one thing we need to look at is let's let's have the right governance within the organization and also how you can actually have um, a very successful insider risk management program within your organization is the fact that you have to have a very solid governance. And what do I mean by solid governance? You need to actually collaborate with the right stakeholders within the organization. You can have a successful insider threat program if you're not collaborating with other relevant departments within the organization. Because fine, we know that the IT, the InfoSec would actually implement the technology, but they can't do it on their own. So you need to bring in teams like legal team. You need to bring in HR team privacy team, corporate security, even the business, because at the end of the day, it's the business um, department or the business leadership team that will sponsor your program itself. So because it cuts across, when we're talking about risk, ideally in an organization, um, risk, risk is actually cut across different departments, not just one department is managing the risk, because you have HR risk, you have privacy risk, you have even business risk, even physical security risk. So that's why you need to enable, you need to partner with all of the departments that I've just mentioned to ensure you have um, a very robust in, um, insider threat program as well. So also you need to be able to, and I usually say this thing, um, contextual training. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about annual training, right? You know, the usual checklist we have within the organization. You need to be able to, and now I'm talking about how you can prevent insider risk. Are the employees or the users within your organization, are they cybersecurity aware? Because at the end of the day, the technology might be great, but most of the attacks we see right there, most of the data breaches we see out there, it's usually emanate, it's usually originate from a user, someone that did something wrong, someone that did some, someone that clicked on something they should not actually have clicked on. So ideally, um, the power of contextual training is quite important. Are we giving our users, are we giving our employees like, when they're interacting with confidential documents, are we giving them that policy tool tips? Are we giving them that context training like, oh, you're, you're sending a confidential document to an external recipient. Do you want to label this file? Do you want to check this recipient? So at the end of the day, over long term, um, security and compliance become second nature to um, the users within the organization. But what is most important is ensuring our users are cybersecurity aware because at the, at the end of the day, you could have, you could actually have a user perform a malicious activity and you could have a user just perform an accidental error and inadvertent activity so you actually need a technology in order to be able to detect um or to differentiate between a malicious activity and also an inadvertent activity so ideally your governance is quite important the people the process and the technology works hand in hand together and also talking about the technology itself within the insider risk management we have the uh what's it called the um, out of box policy template that can allow you quickly detect data um, exfiltration, data leaks by disgruntled employee, which is like a quick win for you in order to actually see what is happening within your organization. And also we have the analytics scans that actually scan what your users are actually doing. So you can actually create much more stringent policies to help you prevent or even contain insider risk as they occur as well. So um, at the end of the day, People, process, and technology actually want, works hand in hand together. So you actually even knowing your, your critical asset is the very first step of the ladder. And then you identify your potential insider risk and also working across relevant stakeholders that will help you manage this risk together. And that's how you can actually have a robust insider threat program. So I think I'll hand over to Laura here. To, um, yeah, thanks, Ida, and thanks, Johan. Um, yeah, so uh, so that's going to be the end of our, our, our presentation uh, materials. So what we're going to do is, is stop recording.